First Lady, uh, Lady Bird Johnson quote, quoted that, perhaps no place in any community is so totally democratic as the town library. The only entrance requirement is interest itself. Libraries have always been a trusted center of lifelong learning in cities throughout America. And we've taken libraries for granted in a lot of ways because we've not told the many stories about the impact of libraries to the community. I'm here today because I have a story. I grew up in a rural community in Florida where we were migrant families and we would um, oftentimes find ourselves playing in the playground and then the mobile library would pull up. And as an eight or nine year old, I had a choice. I could play on the playground or I could go into that mobile library. Well, most often, the playground won out. But eventually, I found my way into that mobile library. And I traveled the world through reading and experiencing and touching books and talking to the librarian that was assigned to that mobile facility. And fast forward ahead, about 15 years later, I ran for public office at, a, at the grad school. And one of the first things I did when I came back home was I was determined to get a facility that would make a difference to students in that neighborhood and in our community. So I wrote this speech and I went to the county commission and the state legislators. And for eight straight years, I would stand up and I would read the exact speech before this committee. And finally, the chair of the Senate committee stopped me and said, Mayor, we got it. Let me read your speech. And, he said, and finally she said, let's give him a library. <laughs> and we were able to get that library. And a few years after that, to show my continued passion and honor, it was clearly an honor, the county commission named that the Clarence E. Anthony Library Branch in Palm Beach County, Florida. But it's a personal story, and it's the reason I'm here representing cities all over America in my role as executive director. I know that libraries make a difference. Our city leaders know that libraries make a difference. But times have changed, but libraries are still critically important in cities throughout America. Libraries are no longer just a collection of books and periodicals. Libraries have a central role in promoting digital literacy and providing online access to all residents. And if we accept that library, that education is the equalizing force in America in order to be successful in America, we know that libraries are a key element of education and access for many people, especially those that are of minority uh, culture. Digital literacy is no longer a choice either. Access to high-speed internet is essential for Americans to do everything from finding work to applying for college or gaining health care access. It's almost impossible in today's society to be successful without access to the internet. Broadband promotes economic development by improving all kinds of access. If you don't have access to broadband and internet, education, healthcare, workforce development, skill development, none of that will be able to occur at the same level throughout America. So in recognizing that, leaders throughout our communities in America are saying, in order to be competitive, we must have a community that is educated, has access to internet and access to broadband. And we're doing it, why? Not just because of the educational, it's because of the competitive advantage 
if you have a well-educated population, if you have a population that has access to internet and broadband, and you have a community that has a great library system, one, companies are going to want to locate into your community. You're going to find more economic development. You're going to find more job creation in that community. So it really is a competitive advantage if you want to be a community that is going to recruit the talented best throughout America. So we know as city leaders that this is our job, this is our responsibility, and as in your presidency, the Declaration of Rights for Libraries, Madam President, for the American Library Association, we must have a Declaration of Rights for Libraries throughout America. Now, there are some cities that are doing some creative things. The city of Philadelphia has a program within their library system that really opens up that library to the community where iPads and pods and all types of uh, uh, instruments are there to be able to provide access to the young people in that community. That's working to the millennium generation, but it's still not reaching the 1.5 million people that live in Philly. It's only reaching a small percentage. But that innovation in terms of using those devices are examples of what we can do in cities in partnership with the American Library Association. In St. Paul, there's a community library consortium that provides digital literacy to the lower level income people that work and live in that community. Now, the city recognizes that they can't do it alone, so what they're doing is partnering with the nonprofit community, the school system, and the private sector, and the private sector, who has a role in helping to promote digital literacy as well as helping to promote libraries. The city of Joplin, Missouri, who was devastated uh, by um, a tornado years ago, recognized that one of the most important things that they must get back started was their library. 87% of public libraries now offer services, and Joplin was one of those places that said that we must get our library system back up if our kids was going to be able to be successful. This is an, a, a vital issue to American cities. So this is the time for reinvention. The library systems that are in place now in communities have to step up to the table or they won't be recognized. So I'd recommend a couple of things because I don't like making speeches without having a call to action. One, we must make the argument and be more vocal using media to show the value of libraries. And that's, again, one of the principles that you identified in your declarations of right. Two, we must create advocates. We got to tell more stories and change the face of what a library is in the community, because it is about job creation, economic development, empowerment. It's about access. And if we don't frame it in that way, our message gets lost. We must open up the library to all sectors of the community, and I mean every sector of the community. And our teams and staffs in the library must represent the community. We must have all cultures employed in the library. People, like it or not, want to see themselves in the library, in the majority African American, minority communities throughout America. Create opportunities and partnerships with local schools, city halls, because we can't address this issue alone. So with that, I will say finally, we must get some federal legislation around E-rate done. We must look at what the president's doing on Connect Ed to make sure that we get all of these issues up front while you're here in Washington. The National League of Cities is committed to working with you. And we hope that as we move the ball and have this Declaration of Rights for Libraries, we do it as a nation in partnership. Thank you all very much.